All right, Frank Root here. Today, we're gonna take the Promoto MX, and we're gonna remove the front forks, the rear shock, rebuild them, and reinstall them. And we're gonna dial in your Promoto MX suspension. So the first thing we gotta do to maintenance the forks here, obviously, is get them off of the bike. Uh, I'm gonna start by disassembling the brake cable here off the bottom. So we'll go ahead and uh, push up on the brake arm, and then we're gonna pull this black housing up until it comes out of the top of the guide housing here. And we'll just kind of slide it off to the side, and we'll get the brake cable itself and the ferrule out of the bottom of the brake arm there. And then we'll go ahead and pull the housing up here and the cable off the side. And then I'll basically just snap this guy out. Uh, there's a little clamp here uh, behind the number plate, and then you just get that guy out of the way, uh, and that's all that we need to do. And then there's uh, triple clamp screws here. There's lowers and uppers, so we're gonna go ahead and loosen those. Uh, I'm gonna use my power driver here with a 2.5 tip, and you don't have to pull the screws all the way out. I just loosen them up a couple of turns. All right, and then I basically just put my thumb on this bottom triple clamp and then just try and pull the forks uh, straight down. And once you get them loose, you can just pull them out. I'll set the bike over here off to the side. And then I'm gonna use my 2.5 driver again. And there's a screw here in the bottom of the fork lug that connects to the bottom of the fork shaft. And I'll just go ahead and remove that. Set the screw off to the side. Just pull the fork out. Got a little thread lock on it from the assembly, so it's a little, little tight sometimes. And Go ahead and remove the other screw. Set that off to the side and then remove this fork the same way. So there's our two forks disassembled from the bike and you can just set this uh, wheel and lug assembly off to the side. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna get a rag out and put the forks on the rag so that I can build and maintenance them. All right, so in your Promoto MX, you're gonna receive this tool bag. Uh, it has both shock tools and fork tools. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a knife or scissors to open this bag and discard the bag, and then you have these tools. Uh, so this tool here has a hex feature that fits right into the cap of the fork, the upper cap, and the first thing we're gonna do is remove that and just hold, get a good grip there on the fork body, and then just spin that counterclockwise. It'll unthread, and it actually pulls the entire fork assembly out, uh, and then this is basically uh, just a tube here. And I'll show you what's inside the tube. It has basically a uh, dust cap here on the bottom, so a rubber part. Uh, so we'll pull that off. And then you have another tool here on the other end of that, of that same plastic tool that fits this flat shape here on the edge of this lower cap. And same thing, you can just crack that loose and unthread it. And there's an O-ring here at the bottom to help seal it so you don't need thread lock or anything. And then on the very inside here, there is a little plastic uh, bushing. It's like a low friction bushing that the fork tube rides on. So you can pull that out. I have another rag here uh, for cleaning. And you can either uh, just use a clean rag. You can use maybe some um, like simple green, or I like to use uh, some Magnum Force 2 Dynamite Electronic Parts Cleaner. Um, it's not as harsh as let's say like brake cleaner. So it works pretty good. But we'll just clean this guy off. I always put the towel like through the middle so we can kind of clean out the middle of the part. Um, wipe off the inside of that dust boot. That's all good. So now these parts are all clean. I'll just reassemble this fork tube. You should put the plastic bushing in first and then you take the lower cap. Make sure your red o-ring is already on there and you just uh, screw this cap on. You'll feel it start to hit the o-ring and kind of start to tighten. Do most of it by hand. And I'll just grab this tool at the end and give it a good twist to make sure it's tight. And then the dust cap really just slides over this groove in the bottom fork tool. And I just start on one side and then kind of push around the circle and snaps right on. So there's your fork tube reassembled and ready to go. Now the fork, so it's actually a really cool design, a little different than a traditional RC shock. So the shock is actually in here. This is where the oil chamber is and the piston. Uh, this is the piston shaft here and it moves the piston through the oil chamber and the springs are actually here on the outside. So instead of coiling over, they're actually stacked. 
So the first thing I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna grab my dynamite shock shaft pliers here. I'm gonna hold the cap and I'll kind of grab the top of the spring, pull it down a little bit, and then kind of hold onto the shaft. And I'll use the middle shock shaft groove here and I'll just hold on to this uh, fork shaft that comes through. And then I'll grab the uh, hex end of this wrench again and put it on this and go ahead and unwind it. There's a little M 2.5 nut here in the cap, that thread lock that has a nylock in it so it kind of threads on. And then I'll take those shock shaft pliers off. I'll pull my springs off. You have a center guide bushing here. Then you have these two spacers, which are actually our ride height spacers. And we'll pull the other spring off. Now you have a black spring, you have a black spring, you have a silver spring. The reason that you have two springs is they're actually wound in opposite directions. So that as they compress, the center spacer spins and unwinds both of them at the same rate, uh, which keeps them basically from damaging the spring and trying to unwind it over time. And then here's basically your shock assembly. Uh, so to unscrew this, we're gonna use our fork wrenches here. There's a nine millimeter end and a six millimeter end. And the six millimeter end goes on the bottom and the nine millimeter end goes on the top right here. You can see there's some flats just underneath this black bushing. So you basically key it in there and I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it up. Now these are fairly tight. Uh, this is done intentionally. It does take a lot of leverage um, to loosen these up and to tighten them up. They're tightened to 12 Newton meters, uh, which is just the right amount of pressure to keep them from uh, coming undone while running. So we can move our fork wrenches there. And then I'm gonna dump out this dirty oil uh, here on the rag. And I'll just kind of slowly push the shaft down. And you can see there's our piston. And we're gonna go ahead and pull the shaft all the way out. I'm gonna show you how to change the seals in case you need to do that. So same thing, you can use your nine millimeter end uh, here and then use your six millimeter end here. And just kind of crank this cap loose, this aluminum cap. And then once you have it loosened, you can just unthread it with your hands. And you can see there's a little O-ring here around the outside and that keeps this cap tight keeps you from needing to use thread lock on it. Uh, if you need to remove it, I use the dull end of my X-Acto and just kind of pop it away and then kind of pull it up and off. Or you can use like a dental pick or a small wrench, but just be careful not to cut the seal. Definitely don't want to do that. So you pull that seal off there. And then here's another plastic bushing. So this is the same material plastic bushing, uh, low friction that's in the end of the shaft here. So basically, as a fork tube is telescoping, it's sliding on this plastic bushing and then the plastic bushing that's on the top of this guy. And then your seals are actually right here in the end. You have an X-ring seal and a spacer and then one more X-ring seal. So if you're rebuilding from scratch and you're putting fresh seals in, Right, this is kind of your, your empty fork tube assembly. And there's one spacer in here that we'll try to get out real quick. There it is. All right, so here's your empty fork tube assembly. Now we're gonna reassemble it from scratch. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take this uh, fork shaft here. It's got an M2.5 nut and the piston and a steel washer under it. And you'll kind of notice the piston actually has grooves around the outside rather than holes through it. It's because of the small diameter, there's not room to put holes uh, in between the edge. So we have holes around the outside there to dampen the fluid. Then we have this kind of star-shaped spacer. This is basically a limiter. And this limiter uh, has all of the extra cutouts in it so that it takes up as little volume as possible. But that'll actually go over the shaft and down against the piston there and then we'll actually install the sh piston shaft first. There's a really good reason for doing this. There's a couple of sharp edges here at the top where the shaft is cut and we want to make sure that we don't cut our seals as we install them. So we'll go ahead and we'll take one of our black seals here and we'll actually install it kind of loosely over this guy making sure that we don't put any extra pressure on it and cut the seal. 
and then we'll put the spacer over and then we'll do this the next seal and we can just kind of push all those things down the shaft till they go into the little cartridge at the top of the fork tube body and then we'll slide our uh, spacer here I'll go ahead and clean this because it's outside of the shock so it could get a little dirty clean it inside and outside like we did the other and then we'll go ahead and reinstall this first then we'll take our o-ring seal and we'll go ahead and slide that over the threads on the outside of them and it'll sit below the threads above the bushing and then we take our cap last and we go ahead and slide that over and then we'll go ahead and thread that on and we'll use our fork wrenches again the nine millimeter end on the fork tube and the six on the cap and we'll tighten this one now this one should be snug but it doesn't need to be like he man down it doesn't need to go crazy tight because you do have that seal in there to help so now you have your kind of your fork assembly built there and now we need to fill with oil so i have some tlr certified 45 weight oil here this is what comes stock in the promoto mx obviously for different conditions whether it's cold or hot you could go a little uh, lower on the weight of the oil so you can go to like 40 weight if it's cold if it's hot you can go up to 50 55 you can tune for your certain conditions uh, but yeah we have 45 here it's about the right temperature uh, definitely my recommended starting point uh, i always uh, unscrew the cap we have a little blue uh, stopper in here so i actually take mine out and i cut the bottom off and then i just reinstall it keeps me from leaking um, and it works really well and then i'll basically just fill up this fork body here right till we get to the bottom of the threads we don't need to go all the way to the top because the uh, fork lug itself is going to take up some volume in there and then you need some volume for the piston shaft so bottom of the threads is enough oil so we do have our stock steel fork lug here. Um, we also have a titanium option part fork lug, 60% of the weight of the steel version. We're gonna go ahead and install that. The assembly is exactly the same though, whether it's the titanium or the steel version. Um, both of the fork lugs have a little groove here in part of the, in one side uh, in the threads. And that is a channel for the oil to pass through so that you can bleed the, the forks a little bit easier. So what I do is I hold uh, here the fork lug so that that groove is directly up and then I'll actually kind of meet the shock the fork body here to it and I'll thread it right until it gets right before the seal and then I'll basically very slowly with my palm here kind of push the piston in slowly we're going to purge some of that extra oil that's in there again you don't want to do it too fast you don't need to probably do it as slow as I'm doing it but just a deliberate speed and then when it bottoms out I'll basically hold it there and then I'll work, hold this fork tube and I'll kind of twist it closed with my hand and I'll get it nice and snug and I'll grab my rag here and I'll wipe all the oil extra oil off and got the seal popped out just a little bit there so I'll just back it off a little bit get that seal seated back in and go ahead and tighten it back down making sure our steel is staying in there good yep everything's good now it's nice and tight and then i'll pump the fork shaft here and what i'm looking for is i want this fork shaft to be able to travel all the way in to the bottom without getting tight so right now like i'm not bottoming it out i'm literally hitting like compressed oil it's getting tight before the parts bottom out physically so i need to crank this guy loose past the seal again so we can bleed a little bit more oil out and we'll do the same thing. We'll just kind of squeeze to the end and then we will tighten everything down. Make sure that that seal doesn't come out of its groove. Wipe off the excess oil again. And now I check it and the shaft goes all the way to the bottom and bottoms out. So that's what we're looking for. Now, once we get it bled properly, we do need to make sure that we tighten it down with the fork wrenches. These are nice long wrenches so that we can get a lot of leverage on these parts and get them very tight. They need to be tight or they can loosen during running. So definitely put some, put some strength into it. When you take them apart, you get a good feel for, for how tight they were. So get them nice and tight there and now we're all set. Okay, so next we're gonna install the springs back on. One thing I wanted to point out is that we do have different spring rates as option parts. 
So here you can see we have a black and a silver spring and there's a little bit of blue shrink tube on that. That's the blue spring, that's the medium rate. There's also green and black. Green is soft and black is firm. The springs that come on the bike do not have the shrink tube, but these are all stiff black springs. So just to reference, when you order the replacement part, they will come black, blue, and green, stiff, medium, soft. But the ones that come on the bike are the stiff, firm ones. And it doesn't matter if you go blue spring, black spring first, doesn't really matter. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and slide one over and it keys here over the bottom of the cap, kind of fits around that shape. And then what I'll do is I'll pull, it, pull the shaft out and then I'll pull the spring down with my other hand and I'll kind of hold it. And we'll slide the spacer over and then I'll do the same thing. I'll kind of slide the spacer down and hold it. And then these are where the ride height spacers go. So initially the bike comes built with a two millimeter spacer and a four millimeter spacer. So six millimeters of preload built in. In your tuning parts bag that comes in the manual, you have additional spacers so you can tune your ride height uh, more than it comes stock. If you need to raise it, if you need to lower it, you can obviously take some of those out. So basically I put the spacers on, uh, hold this down, I put the other spring over it, and then I basically, basically pull that spring down and then hold the shaft a little bit to where I can get these shock shaft pliers on. And we wanna make sure we get all the way to the smooth part of the shaft. So you, you have a little bit of a step that's like a darker steel color and then the threads, but you need to be on the silver smooth part of the shaft there. Hold that with the middle of those dynamite shock shaft pliers. Then you have your cap with the nut. And what I do is I put my thumb over the nut so that it doesn't come out and then kind of just thread it on, get it started. And then once the nut gets to the nylock, you can kind of feel it tighten up a little bit. You can use the hex end of this tool here to tighten it down. and just get it nice and snug there. And then you can take the pliers off. So that's your fork assembly, the way that it actually functions. You got your springs, you got your dampening, and you can feel the movement there. All right, and now the last thing that we're gonna do before we reinstall the fork into the fork tube is we're gonna use some black grease. So I got some TLR high pressure black grease here, and we're just gonna grease the spacer here, this Teflon spacer in the middle. So I'll just put a dab of grease around that, all the way around. And then we need to have some grease for this lower spacer, but it's actually easier to put it on the bottom of the fork leg here than it is to put it on that spacer directly. Got a little air bubble in there, whoops. So I'll basically put a little groove right around there, right at the top of the, the fork lug. And then we'll go ahead and just install this in. And it'll kind of push through the bottom here. And we'll go ahead and tighten this top down. Get it started by hand and then use the hex shape on this side here and tighten it down. And this one I get try and get pretty snug, but you don't need any tool to hold the fork. It doesn't need to be that tight. So I just hold the fork by hand and then get it pretty tight. Um, and then I go ahead and take a rag and I wipe off any of the extra grease that came through that um, dust boot. Just kind of get it all wiped off. And there you go, you got your Freshly built, ready to run fork. All right, so we got our forks rebuilt here uh, for our Pro Circuit version of the Promoto MX. You can tell by the stickers here on the forks. Uh, they're already rebuilt, so now we're just gonna reinstall them on the bike. So I'm just gonna go ahead and set these off to the side, bring our bike back into the picture and our front hub assembly. I'm actually gonna install the forks into the hub assembly and fork lugs first. Uh, it's easier to get them aligned with the flat spots and then we'll install everything onto the bike. Uh, and then when you're gonna install these, just pay attention to the direction of the sticker. So obviously this is gonna be the right side. You want the sticker facing back. Uh, you don't want it to be like this because then it looks upside down. Won't change how it works, but we definitely wanna stay looking cool. So we'll fit the flats. You can kind of see there's like a flat shape on the end of the fork and inside the fork lug. We need to make sure that those get aligned and that the fork lug slides all the way in to where you just see like a ring at the top of that lower fork lug there. And then we'll go ahead and install this M4 screw. And then we have our other, our left fork lug here. So again, we have the flat spot here, and then we have a flat spot here, and we're just gonna key those two into each other. And like right now we're not keyed in. So right now we're not keyed in. So now we're gonna get them aligned and 
There we go. So you can see how you just have a little ring of silver there that you can see. And we'll go ahead and grab this M4 screw here and go ahead and run this guy in. Now these screws, you do want to get tight and they should have thread lock on them. They will come assembled that way from the factory, but if you have to replace the screw, just make sure to put a good amount of thread lock on them. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall them into the bike. So we'll go ahead and get them started here into the lower triple clamp, sliding them up into the upper triple clamp. Definitely take a second to make sure that you get your stickers aligned evenly if you care about that sort of thing. And then we'll just take our 2.5 driver here and tighten them up. Now with the triple clamps, we wanna get them snug, but you don't wanna get crazy tight. Um, you, basically you need them to not flex all of the time, but if they do flex, you want them to be able to flex back um, so that you can have everything constrained properly. So I'll actually just do this one by hand and you can feel when it starts to get tight and then that's about it, okay? And we'll do the other side. Definitely when you're using uh, the power tools, you kind of take a little while to get used to your tools so you don't go too crazy. I have a really good feel for these. I've had them for years. So, all right, so there we're all set. We got everything aligned. Forks are operating and working properly. Now we just got to reinstall our brake cable. So go ahead and run that up and over the handlebars. And then we'll go ahead and slide it through this clamp behind the number plate. And we'll run the cable through this slot and then we'll pull the housing through. And we'll run that down. And then we'll actually put the ferrule here, the cable through the slot, the ferrule into the lower brake arm. And then we'll kind of push that up and we'll pull the housing up pull the cable through the slot there in the guide for the housing and they'll kind of pull everything down and it'll pull the, ho the housing down into the guide and kind of lock it in. All right, so we got the front forks uh, disassembled, rebuilt, set up, dialed in and reinstalled on the bike. Now we're gonna move to the rear shock. We're gonna first get it uh, removed from the bike, then we'll rebuild it and then we'll reinstall it. So to remove the rear shock from the bike, we're just gonna start by removing the rider uh, we do need to take the rider off to get to the upper rear shock mount. So just pull the jersey up, pull the pin out, body clip out, and then the pin out of the back of the rider. And we'll flip the rider up out of the way. And then we have this uh, twist lock here on top of the legs. So we'll just go an eighth turn counterclockwise and that'll pull right off. And then we gotta pop the feet off the peg. So I just put my thumb under the heel, push up, and it'll kind of snap those off, put the rider figure off to the side there, or the legs at least. And then the screw is actually right behind this panel. So we're gonna remove this front fender panel with those two screws. And we'll set that off to the side. And then we're actually gonna remove this screw right here. So this is a 2.5 screw. So remove this screw. We don't have to take this uh, left rear fender off. Uh, or left rear panel off. And then there's a mud guard um, underneath here that kind of covers the rear shock, keeps a lot of mud from going in. And it actually kind of slides into the side. So you actually just kind of pull it back and then down and out. Okay, and then the screw that holds the top of the shock in is actually right through that hole. If you look through, you'll see right in the middle of it is a two millimeter head for a button screw. And go ahead and pull that out. And then to remove the bottom of the shock, it actually mounts here on this lower knuckle. So we'll go ahead and pull the suspension down. You definitely need to unhook the top first so that you can pull it down far enough for the screw head to clear. This is also an M2 screw. And pull that out. And now the shock is disconnected and you can just kind of reach in the back, grab the top of the shock and push it down and then pull it out the back. So now we have our rear shock assembly here, uh, fully off the bike. We're just gonna disassemble it uh, and rebuild it and show you guys how to go through building the rear shock. So I'm gonna start by using my 1.5 driver and I'm gonna remove uh, this button head screw that holds the spring cup on. Set that off to the side. Kind of hold the eyelet here and then I put my hand, uh, the top of the shock basically in my palm. And I'll use these fingers and I'll pull the spring cup back and then you kind of push it down uh, like this, and then you can just use your fingers to kind of pull the spring out of it and off. 
Uh, one thing that's really unique about the MX is that the spring rate of the spring is extremely stiff compared to most RC springs. This is actually a 21 pound spring. Uh, for reference, like a Truggy spring is usually five and a half to six pound rate. So it does take a little bit of force to get that spring off. Um, and then now we have the shock off. We, you see we have a, a travel limiter in here and it keeps the rear tire from bottoming out on the battery box. And we have our kind of mostly a normal like eighth scale-ish design shock here. Uh, so it shouldn't be anything too new to everybody. Uh, we'll go ahead and start by taking the holder of the screw out of the top there. So there's a bushing that goes in one side and a bushing that goes in the other. One's plastic and one's aluminum. And then we have our shock tools that we opened uh, with the fork. So this slot right here is for the cap, fits right over it. And then this bottom part, it's got a bigger opening on one side that actually slides over the bottom of the shock and then matches this hex shaped feature on the bottom of the shock, keys into that. And then you just unscrew it. And once you get it started, you can ditch the tools and unthread it pretty quickly. Okay, we'll dump all this old oil out onto this old rag here. Pump the piston, try and get some of the oil out from underneath it. All right, move that dirty rag out of the way. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use our dynamite shock shaft pliers here. There's uh, three sizes here on the inside. I'm gonna use the largest of the sizes, so the third one, and basically clamp on that shock shaft, and then I'll use my fingers to basically unthread this eyelet. Pull the spacer off, and then you can go ahead and push the piston out the bottom. And one thing you'll notice right away is that this piston is really quite different from any other pistons that we normally have on RC cars. It's almost twice as thick um, and it has uh, 12 one millimeter holes, a lot different of a dampening setup. Obviously uh, the bike weighs a little over eight pounds, quite a bit, and most of the weight sits on this rear shock alone. So the dampening characteristics are quite a bit different than what we would traditionally have on a car. Uh, but yeah, this is actually a two piece piston. Those two pieces fit together. I'm gonna take it apart just so you can see the two pieces and I'll show you how to lock them in. This is a M2.5 nut, so you need a 5.0 millimeter nut driver. And you just kind of loosen that. And there'll be a little washer above the piston and then a larger washer below the piston there. So you can just remove those. And then just to show you guys what the piston looks like, it actually looks like this. And you can see there's actually two uh, dimples or, or nipples are here on the bottom part of the piston and then the top has the recesses that fit into those. So they key into each other and that keeps all the holes aligned around the piston um, and keeps the piston nice and flat. If you tried to mold something that thick it would not mold very well which is why it's made from two pieces. So we have our shaft here. Obviously this one end has large threads. This other end has small threads and a step. The piston fits on the step so we're going to go on that side. We'll go thick washer large washer first, then we'll go piston, then we'll go thin washer, and then we'll put on that M2.5 nut and get it started with our fingers there. And then we'll use the five millimeter nut driver. And there is nylock on this nut, which is great because it won't come loose. So you can get it pretty snug, but you don't have to go crazy tight. And then on the inside of the shock here, cartridge, inside of the shock cartridge here are your seals. So you can just loosen this up with your fingers, kind of pull this off. There's a spacer that goes inside that has a step on it. It'll only fit one way, so it's pretty straightforward. And then you have uh, two X-ring seals and a spacer that goes between them here in the bottom, which is pretty traditional. So you have your two X-ring seals here. Those are kind of the important ones. So if we're putting new X-ring seals, right, we'll tear it down to this, to this stage, we'll put in the fresh X-ring seals. So you go one seal in, one spacer, second seal in. I always put a little bit of oil on, this, on the seals before I install them. Uh, these ones have already been in oil, so I didn't put any on there. And then we have the step spacer here, and the smaller step is gonna go inside, and it'll actually sit uh, 
against the seal, and then the larger step will actually sit against the bottom of the shock body. Now, one thing that we have here are we have a couple of aluminum option parts for the Protomoto MX shock. They're aluminum shock caps. They come in a set together. We have a lower cap and an upper cap here. We're going to install these just so you guys can see what the option parts look like on the shock, but the installation process is exactly the same between the stock parts and the optional parts. So we'll take that aluminum cap and we'll just thread it right on here. You can see there's an O-ring seal here against the bottom and the cap will actually bottom out on that and the O-ring seal will keep the cap from loosening. You don't need any thread lock. So once you get that, I, I get it tight but finger tight. Once you have that set, I always put a drop of oil down in the shock body before I install the shock shaft just to be sure that the threads of the shock shaft are kind of running through oil before they go through the seals and that can keep the threads from doing any damage to the seals. So we got that out through there. Now I'm using a TLR certified shock oil here. Again, 45 weight, same as the forks, but that seems to be the right balance for most weather conditions for the Promoto MX. So I put a little bit of oil in there just to try and get a little bit of the air out, get that free movement. Okay, now I'm gonna take my dynamite shock shaft pliers here and I'll clamp down on the bottom. I got to make sure I don't spill it upside down. I have, do have a little bit of oil in there, but that's why I didn't fill it all the way to the top. And I almost forgot, you got to put the spacer on first. So don't forget that spacer. Put the spacer on and then put your eyelet on. And you thread the eyelet all the way up until it bottoms out at the end of the threads. All right, there we go. You see, no threads showing. That feels nice and snug. And this guy's ready to go. So we're gonna go ahead and finish filling it with this 45 weight oil. Uh, for the rear shock, we're gonna fill it up to where it's pretty much flush here. And I'm gonna pump the shock. Same thing, I wanna get any air that might be trapped underneath the piston out. Uh, but we kinda did that before when we put the first couple drops of oil in there. So we're actually pretty much set. All right, and then I'm gonna put a couple more drops. I'm actually gonna put it just, cause it's a brand new shock cap and there's no oil in it. Put a little domed over, um, but it's probably gonna push most of that out. So I'm gonna take my aluminum cap and go ahead and thread it on. Now this is the optional aluminum cap, but like I said, the composite cap builds exactly the same. So just get it started, thread it down. And I'll go ahead and use my shock tool, open end on the bottom with the hex shape. Top there fits right over the shock cap. Get it nice and snug. And I'm gonna use the M2.5 screw that comes with the plastic cap here. The aluminum cap will actually come with the M2.5 screw and a copper washer, but I do not have that in front of me right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and show it like this. Go ahead and slowly push the shaft in and you should see a little bit of oil, ideally purge out the top hole here. So I actually probably didn't put quite enough oil in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of drops right here. As I pull the shaft down, it'll actually suck that oil in. And now as I push it back up slowly, we should see a little bit of oil come out like so. And I'll go ahead and install this button head screw. Get it nice and snug. Now that's sealing the shock, so it definitely needs to be snug. It'll basically crimp down on that soft copper washer and it'll create a really good seal. Now when you go to feel the shock, what you wanna feel is as you get towards the top, you don't want it to feel like it's getting tighter. If it does, it has too much oil in it and the oil is pressurizing. So this feels nice and consistent through the travel. One thing I'm gonna note is that this is an extremely thick feeling shock in your hand. It will feel not right. It might feel broken to you if you're used to other RC car shocks, but this is how thick the motorcycle shock needs to be based on the suspension geometry, the weight of the bike, and how much weight sits on the rear tire. So we got that all built. Now we'll just move our spacer up. We'll slide our spring back on over. Same thing here. I'm gonna put it uh, the top in the palm of my hand and I'm gonna kind of pull the spring back and then I'll push this spring cup on here and kind of get that aligned so that it keys in and that slides right over. And we'll grab our 
M2.5 screw here, the 1.5 driver, and we'll just reinstall that. It's pretty easy to see what side it goes in because the hole on one side is larger than the hole on the other side. So it'll actually slide right into one side where the other side it would stop right away. Uh, and then we'll reinstall our uh, upper cap shock bushings here, the composite one and the aluminum one. I always put the composite one in first because it actually fits around the outside. And then the aluminum one fits through the center of the composite one. Um, and then it doesn't really matter for installation, but I tend to put the bleeder cap hole towards the rear and the mud guard on the bottom of the shock is also gonna go towards the rear. All right, so we got a ProMoto MX rear shock rebuilt and assembled here, ready to be installed on the bike. Again, you'll notice that this shock, if you push down on it, is really stiff and really thick, but that's what it needs to be to feel right on the bike. So I went ahead and removed the rear fender here. You don't need to for installation, but it's just gonna allow for better camera angles and access so you can see how to reinstall this shock. So basically what we're looking at is you have this hole in the arm, the shock needs to go down through there, and then it needs to fit kind of between the suspension. And then you'll see up here in the top, there is a bar that kind of runs across that seats the battery door. And you actually gotta kind of push the shock down under that and past it and kind of get it in that area. Now we're gonna install the shock here on that lower knuckle. So we have our screw here that we removed. It's kind of a pin screw. It's basically got like a shaft here at the top and then threads at the bottom. And that's a special screw. It fits straight into the bottom of the plastic eyelet. There is no shock ball because a shock only rotates this way. It doesn't need any angular uh, rotation either. So we're gonna go ahead and use our uh, two millimeter wrench here and install this. And we just get the shock lined up. And this one will go in pretty easy. And you need to get it tight, but don't, don't need to go hand. There's not a lot of load on this screw that way. So we'll get it snugged there. And then we'll go back to the other side and we'll get the shock installed first. So what I do is I'll put kind of two fingers in here in the back and I'll find the sides of the shock so that I know that it's flat and then I'll push it forward. There's two bars that come down and the shock needs to fit between them. And then if you look through this hole in the side, you'll be able to see how the shock is aligned with the hole. And basically what I'll do is I'll get it to where I know that it's pretty close. And I'll actually grab the rear tire and kind of compress it up. And it actually helps center the shock in that little valley in there. And then I'll take my two millimeter screw, put it on the end of my driver here find that hole. So yeah, we'll go ahead and thread this screw in. You can use the driver, I'm doing it by hand. And you'll feel when you get it tight there. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is we need to reinstall this rear mud guard slash fender. You'll see that there's a pin here on the right side and that actually fits into a hole on the right plate. And you kind of locate that first. And then this tongue, there's a little groove in the top underneath the battery uh, door slash seat that the tongue fits into. And then there's a little slot on the right side that this pin locks into. And all those things keep it secure and keep it from rotating when you tighten the screw down. So we'll do our best to get you in there so you can see it, but you can kind of see the hole right there that the first pin is gonna slide into. So we'll slide the pin in there. And then we'll get into the groove in the top. And then you kinda like squeeze the right side in and you get this pin to slide in that slot. And everything is set. And once you get everything in there, if you look down, you'll see the mud guard pretty much goes nearly vertical and there's not a big gap. If you miss this groove in the top and get it too far forward, it can kind of look like this. You can see how the mud guard is really angled back. So you just want to get it a little further forward like that. And then we'll just reinstall this M2.5 screw. And again, you have a boss here and a boss here, and they fit into the negative spaces on this panel. So if they don't feel like they're lining up, 
uh, you, they're not in the right spot, they'll literally like click into place and hold themselves pretty much. And then we just run those screws in. All right, we'll grab our rider legs and we'll go ahead and pop them over. I basically put my thumb on the bottom of these foot pegs and then put my fingers above and just kind of squeeze down the feet over the foot pegs. Take our rider lock here, just pull the jersey forward so we don't kind of clamp down on that. This one slides over and it's gonna go quarter turn clockwise, uh, about an eighth turn actually. Uh, and then we'll pull our rider doll back down, slide the pin from the back to the front. And then we'll slide the body clip in. And then I always rotate the clip down so that the bend is back towards the rider's body. It gives you the most clearance. And there we go. All right, so we went through the Promoto MX today. We rebuilt the front fork. We rebuilt the rear shock. Everything is dialed in and ready to hit the whoops, a jump or a wheelie, whatever you're gonna have fun with. For any other tuning tips or rebuild or maintenance videos, follow the LOSI YouTube channel and we'll see you on the next one.